until you step there. Darkness may be in charge until you step there. Where our church is in area one. Before we went there, it was a den of criminals. We were told that in those days, if they chased criminals, they ran into that place. And that was the end of the pursuit. They ran, the criminals ran there to that place. It was a marshy place with bananas and so on, waterlogged, everything. When we arrived, before we arrived, there was a gambling, a permanent gambling place there that had to be displaced. And when those people were displaced, they eyed us almost from, I, I, I know one of those men who was an old man who was, a, who was a, like the head gambler there. Everywhere he's passing in front of the church, he would be eyeing us with anger how we displaced them. Even when we came there, a beer parlor remained side by side with the church. How many of you remember that? Just remain there. Just remain the next fence. But we said light cannot stay together with darkness. And that darkness dissipated. That place, you can see how it is, was humbled, humiliated, subdued, conquered, criminals back to hell. The appearance of light any day is the disappearance of darkness. I see darkness in someone's life disappearing right now. Number two, light brings illumination. Facilitating vision and sight. Light brings illumination. It enhances sight and vision. What is the meaning of that? When you exist as light, your life gives people vision for living. When you exist as light, people know how to live as they see how you live. All right, I'll come back. I'll come to that shortly. People who are losing vision get vision renewed as they see your operation. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? As they see your operation, they get their vision renewed. You are like a spark plug in people's lives. They thought that ministry was not worth it until they saw you. Then they say, if God can help him, he will help me. It was on the grounds of our robust university that that Bishop Benson in the house has stood and he looked everywhere and he said, if God can do it here, he can do it in Africa. God's servant Bishop Uyede got the same thing. I stood there on the same ground. When the Canaan land ground was broken, I was there. When there was no building, I was there. I drove around with my father and the Lord on the bare ground there. I saw the building grow. I saw it when it was, there was no roof. We worshipped under it and the rain beat us in August 1999. Under the roof of it. And I saw all of it grow like that. 
So when the vision for this came, it was easy to see it. Because one light just gave us sight. Is God speaking to somebody here? You should live your life to such a point where at least one human being has a vision for living because they saw your life. Light. Light brings illumination which enhances vision. Enhances sight. It's light. She also give us one of those exit crowds at the glory dome or entry crowds or exit. Thirdly, light brings revelation. When you function as light, when people see you, they hear something. In John chapter 1 verse 23, John said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. I am not just a person. I am a revelation. Listen to this and don't forget this for life. When you exist as light, your life communicates a certain dimension of God to your generation. Your life communicates a dimension. When people see you, they are reminded of a side of God, an aspect of God, a dimension of God. Your life communicates a dimension. There is something about you that reveals something about God. Light is revelation. When you see someone like God, servant Bishop David Oyeriko, you are seeing the El shaddai of God. The supplies of God. When you see somebody like Pastor Iadeboy, you are seeing both the greatness of God that is combined with the holiness of God and the meekness of God. When you saw Archbishop Benson in the Hosa, you saw the lion of the tribe of Judah. Wanted to roar at anything and just tear down every devil and tear every witch. I can go on and on and on and on. You saw our robbers, you saw raw power. What department of God is your life communicating? What dimension of God is your life revealing to your world? You are not too small to be a revelation. You, don't, you, you, don't, you, you are not, it's not compulsory that you, are, you must be a pastor before you become a revelation. There is the God that people cannot see. And God wants them to see you in you. See him in you. To be the visible representation of the invisible God. When you live here today, you can ask God, what dimension of you do you want to reveal through me to my world? What dimension of you, Lord, do you want to reveal through me to, your, to my world? What dimension of you, Lord, do you want to reveal through me to my world? What dimension of you, Lord, do you want to reveal through me to my world? Light brings revelation. Number four, light unveils mysteries. 
It unveils mysteries. Light reveals what is under the cover of darkness. In John chapter 2, sorry, Daniel chapter 2 and in verse 20, all the way to verse 22, Daniel chapter 2, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changed the times and the seasons. He removed kings and set it up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealed the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness. And the light dwelleth with him. When people come into contact with you, when they encounter you, the darkness on their lives is designed to evaporate. Is designed to dissipate, disappear, disintegrate. When they come into contact with you. A pastor came, into, came to see me some time ago. And all of a sudden, I, like I saw it, if, if, a flash of a trance. It happened. I asked him about it. He's the only pastor. In fact, the only Christian from his family. Nobody can successfully be a Christian. His father was a chief that has a snake that worshipped him every morning. That, that mystery just <laughs> exposed and unveiled. The things that are under the cover of People's darknesses are unveiled when they come around you. That shall be your portion from this moment in Jesus' name. Number five, light brings warmth and energy into any environment. It brings warmth and energy. Light is fuel for enthusiasm. Fervency. People step into the sun when there is the need to get warmed. The reptile, the lizard in particular in the morning is unable to move until it gets sunlight and the heat of the sun. That sets it in motion. The eagle looks at the sun. And gets the energy for flight. If you exist as light. You are a mobile bundle of energy. Mobile infectious enthusiasm. There is something about you. That's, that introduces electricity to an environment. Am I communicating? This is not say what we are saying now is not for academic purposes, it's for practical purpose. So you, you can know what your life represents. Pastor, you, you don't step into the church and the church reduces in fire. If you are posted to a new location, it doesn't drop in fire. It's not permitted to drop in fire. Somebody should be revived when they see you. You haven't said anything yet. They just looked at you. You didn't say anything. They just gazed at you. And caught revival. There is something about your face. There is something about your person. There is something about your personality that carries energy. Tired people are revived of tiredness when they see you. Our music director said one day after I finished preaching here in an all night, night till morning like this Friday, tomorrow, about 8 a.m. or 9 he saw me preaching in Delta State of the Saturday. 
for a statewide program at the stadium. He cleaned his eyes to be sure whether I'm the same person. He said, look at me. That sat in the service. I didn't preach anything. I am still trying to recover from the vigil. The person who preached is somewhere else preaching now. He got up from the bed. And he said, you know what? I think he sent me. He said, sir, I am ready for any assignment in case you need me to do anything. He said, the tiredness disappeared on the spot. And probably return back in the evening and still go on evangelism. We're not talking theory. This is practical. There are people, when people see them, they get tired. The sight of them tires people. No. I announce today from this moment forward you shall be revival in motion. Energy in motion. Enthusiasm in motion. You believe that? Shout the loudest amen. You need to write and say I am light. I carry energy. I warm up my environment. I warm up my generation. I am not tired. I cannot be tired. I refuse to be tired. Give the Lord a big clap of hand and take your seat. Light. Number six. Brings hope. And optimism. You know that ray of light equals ray of hope. Light brings hope. It kills fear, worry, anxiety. When God says you are light, I am light. It means we are mobile hope. People have hope when they see us. One woman said, a professor in our church here, 80 something years old. She said her friend called her and said, they said there is threat of uh, terrorism attack or bomb blast or this and that in the city of Abuja. Is your pastor in town? The, the woman said yes the pastor he said my pastor is in town he said then there is no cause for alarm <laughs> if he's in town then it's not a, there's no threat and we are and we are in town we are in town and we'll be in town in fact there are journeys I have cancelled to be in town Nigeria cannot break forth into disaster or war. But in case anything like that happens, we will be the last people to live. The last man standing. You heard me well. That in case there is anything and the devil says he wants to do anything, we will be here on the very last But we are here until we check the devil back to hell. And nothing like that will ever. The devil that can cause such to happen will never be born. Amen. We are here until they have fizzled out. We are here until they have fizzled out. We see their end. They can't see our end. We will see their end. They can't see our end. We are already seeing their end. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? We have anything it takes to go to get citizenship anywhere in the world. Anywhere. We have everything it takes. Have I 
fornicating at all. <laughs> Let your life. Somebody said, he said, I stopped praying for Nigeria. In fact, she said she got angry when they see me praying for Nigeria all the time. But the more I pray, <laughs> because he said it looks like it's a country that does not want to change. But how many of you know the prayer is working? How many of you know things are changing? For the best. And very, very soon. <laughs> Someone said to me, um, people are relocating. I, should, I, I'm thinking of relocating, but uh, I'm not convinced to go. I said, don't go. Those who relocate will soon return back. Very, very soon, they will still start coming back. And maybe we'll interview them to see whether they are qualified to come back. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ wants you to be the hope of your family. The hope of your community. The hope that there is a future. That Christianity works. That those who wait on God don't waste in life. Give people hope that those who wait on God don't waste in life. One young lady met me, she said, in our secondary school, in their secondary school, they were the people going to church, FCS, and those kind of things. Fellowship of Christians. She kept herself pure and clean and neat. Doesn't know any man. He said, she's not married. But the bad, bad girls have married. They have children. So did we waste our time and waste our life following God? She said, look at me. I told her, I said, look at me. By God's power, I grew up like that too. Look at my wife. Did God waste us? Did God waste our life? Say, no matter what the devil tries to tell you, there is somebody you can look at and say, God is still faithful. To look at us. I didn't waste my time. My wife didn't waste her life. And there are many I know. I said, God will not waste you. Then I began to speak prophetically to her. Things that will happen. How God will settle her. And how that settlement will take her across the world. She got married. And within one month entered five countries. Restoration. You are a hope factor. 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 To, your, to the church you pastor. To the church you attend. To the family you are. I prophesy to you today. As a light in your generation. When people see you. They shall have hope. If you are saying amen. Shout the Lord and say amen. When they see you, they shall have hope. When they encounter you, they shall encounter hope. You believe that? Shout the Lord and say, Amen. Look at your neighbor. Say, I am, a, I am a hope factor. In the midst of the world, I am hope. Somebody say, Amen. You know, when, when someone is in the midst of a, a bush, in the night, a forest, everywhere is dark. When you see a torchlight or something, in all likelihood, if there is no fear, the first thing is hope for rescue. I came across an experiment where some rabbits were put inside a big like container, like a drum. One was a control study. This one was open and this one was covered. And the rabbits were trying to come out of this container. It was discovered that the ones that had light, they could see light. They struggled for longer and lived longer than those that had no light. They were covered at all. Because light represented hope to this one. As long as they could see light, they kept trying and they kept and they kept living. Because light is hope. That is who you are. 
Somebody say amen. Somebody say it louder, amen. Somebody say the loudest, amen. Lift up your right hand say, there is hope. Say it loud and say, there is hope. Say it loud and say, there is hope. In the time of the Great Depression of the, of the 20s, a lot of people lost hope and lost everything. And the woman of God, the hope of her generation, stood out in Miss Semple McPherson in Los Angeles and spoke on the radio and spoke on the air. That calmed down the situation at that time. In the Great Chicago Fire, people lost things, properties, burned to ashes, livelihood gone. And what people were doing was taking their life in suicide. This one, next thing, this one has committed suicide. I can't remember if it was D.L. Moody. I don't know who among that time. Came on air and said, in the times that we are in, any coward can commit suicide. It takes a man with guts to live. That was the end of suicide. If you are a coward, go and die. I am not a coward and I'm not going to die a coward's death. Life is worth living and I'm going to face it and face it out. Is God speaking to anybody here? Lift your right hand and say, I am a whole factor in my generation. I have hope and I release hope. Friends, make up your mind. Don't, to keep, don't keep the company of any hopeless person. And I'm, saying, and I'm saying this for the protection of your own heart. Love them. Wish them well. But anybody who cannot be encouraged and refuses and is permanently discouraged and want to take your own courage, give them space. Light brings hope. Number seven. Light brings hope joy and excitement light is joy darkness is depression heaviness is darkness in John chapter 5 and in verse 35 John chapter 5 and in verse 35 John concerning John the Bible said he was a burning and a shining light and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. So in the light of people, there is rejoicing. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 7. Light is sweet. And a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. Light is sweet. Esther chapter 8 verse 16. It said the Jews had light. And gladness and joy. And honor, light. What is the meaning of that? You bring joy, but beyond that, the thought of you brings joy. Somebody thought of you and began to smile. Philippians chapter 1 and in verse 3, Paul the apostle was speaking. To the young church. And he said I, I give thanks to God. Upon every remembrance of you. There is something. That makes me thank God. When I think of you. I just, I just explode in thanksgiving. That is what God. Want your life to be. That somebody. Remembers you and started smiling. Until people say why are you smiling. So don't worry. They thought of you. Please. Reject depression at all costs. 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 You know, I am. Um, the people that are around me, wife, children, if you don't want to laugh and you don't want to be happy, just stay away. Because there are enough things to make you laugh. And I'll tell my wife, I say, please, there is something very serious I want to tell you. And she'll be one, waiting. 
Hitler, what is this? Say, well, just to let you know that I'm, a, I'm appreciative of the privilege of association. <laughs> she will explode and start laughing. Say, is that... Is that why you did your face like that? I said, I hope I have not abused the opportunity. One after the other, after the other, after the others. The people around you are under pressure. Something is wrong with you. Wife is under pressure. Children under pressure. Everything under pressure. Everything under pressure. Light is joy. Light is excitement. You step into the onto the altar. Excitement. Someone say a loud amen. Someone say a loud amen. amen. Someone shout the loud most amen. amen. From this moment forward, joy shall never leave your life. Amen. Excitement shall never leave your life. People will long for your presence because they know that when they come around you, all they have is joy and excitement. Shout the loudest amen. Somebody said, when he sees his, the husband laughing and exploding on the phone, he knows who is talking to him. Yeah. She knows who is talking to him. Just be exploding, exploding. Your life is designed. You are an eternal excellency. The joy of many generation when Jesus was born he said joy to the world goodwill and peace and as his father sent him he sent us now in the name of Jesus every spell of depression in your life expires today say amen like a believer Say amen like a believer. Yeah. Say a louder believers. Amen. Yeah. So shall it be. Number nine. Light brings victory. Over the victory in battle. And victory over danger. You saw the victory that came for Israel when light David appeared. David light appeared in 1 Samuel chapter 17. If you take it from verse 25 all the way to verse 50, because this is a long reading. Won't be able to read them. But we'll just take it as a reference. He appeared and victory appeared. Your life is to assist people to win battles. As light. Your existence assists your generation to be victorious over the battles. Am I communicating? How many of you know that uh, in our time we have had so many confusions? So many. One day, how many of you remember one day some people came out and said, uh, everybody's in hell? How many of you remember that, those uh, revelations from wherever? Uh, Archbishop Idaosa, so and so person, so and so person, so and so person, so and so person. How many of you remember? It became a move. Huh? Even some people who are alive, they still saw them in hell. (laughs) 
I stood up and I preached and I said, it's not revelations, they are devilations. Devil, devils spoke. and knocked out that devil I traveled to the Philippines a pastor in the Philippines who grew up, up in church of God mission he said thank you for standing and talking like that he said I watch what you said he said there was confusion everywhere he died examples bring forth principles that's why we are talking like this we are not blowing no trumpet the matter of grace, the matter of tight. All manner battles that God has given us the help and the mercy to win on behalf of the kingdom by light. The easiest way to fish out a missing snake on, in a bedroom is to flood everywhere with light and to ensure that there is nothing that is hidden. Am I communicating at all? Light causes you to assist your generation. I was a medical student in the university when I went home for holiday, for, for break. And there was this prophetess who was prophesying to everybody and saying all manner of things. The whole community believed that she was of God. She was bringing messages from people's dead father and mother to them. Now, that wouldn't bother me except that a genuine prophet that was is genuine then, genuine today, till today, was deceived too. Yes, that, that, was, that, that was what drew my attention. This man was deceived and was fronting her and presenting her and assisting her. Now this guy is so prophetic that he can tell you what is in your pocket. Yet himself was deceived by this operation. That's why the Bible said even the very elect will be deceived. I mean, how many people have been deceived in our generation today? So I, I looked at the prophet I said you are here you are watching this kind of thing happening. And he said, how is it? I said, this is not of God. He said, eh. I said, listen carefully to the tongue she's speaking. He listened. I said, that is not a tongue. That sounds like the sound of an animal from inside. It didn't start today. So, he said, can we pray? As I said, let's lay hands on her. If it's of God, it can continue. If it's not of God, let it cease. That was the prayer we prayed. Prophecy ceased on the spot. Vision ceased on the spot. Everything died on the spot. For the next 30 years of her life, she was still alive. No prophecy. Demon ceased. That same guy one day told me, he said, have you seen so and so man of God? Powerful on television. I said, ask God, tell God to tell you who he is. <laughs> Let me leave that story for another time. God, who is this person? After four weeks, he called me back. He said, I have to pray against that person. I have to pray against that man. The same person who was praising. He said, I saw him in the graveyard where he connected his power from the midst of four dragons and from there straight to the altar. <laughs> you know, he told me, he said, you have so, such a sharp discernment. That was how you, you say something. Many years. He remembered. He says, well, let me go and pray about this one. Am I communicating? You end 
the battles of from this moment forward I announce I decree I prophesy God will use you to end the battles of your family the battles of your community the battles of your generation as light receive that grace now in the name of Jesus receive that grace now somebody shout power take your seat and finally light brings restoration you remember the story of in Luke chapter 15 and in verse 8 where a woman had a coin that was missing and the Bible says she lit a candle candle and put it under the in the house and swept until she found the coin light brings restoration in the lives of individuals and in the and in in their generation listen to this when you are light when people see you they see what is missing in their lives does that make sense they see what is missing in their lives and so they make the effort to get it when they see your life they see your marriage they see your family they see your conduct they see what is missing in their lives young man in our church here who is effortlessly in his millions he got in, uh, encountered the commission as a student all the way through law school became a lawyer many many years in the practice now he said to me he said my secret is I don't just listen to the message I watch how you live he said I observe the things you do and why you do them he said I apply them to business I apply them to my life this guy is just effortlessly no stress effortless millions neat one not crooked nothing when people see you they see what is missing in their lives they see what they need in their lives they see what must be added to their lives they know how to live as they see how you live they know what to do as they see what you do that is our responsibility as light listen to this I said it some time ago that if nobody is learning from you and nobody want to take the steps you are taking then in all likelihood you are wasting your life did you hear what I just said there is no human being at all on earth who says I want to be like this man or I like the way he's living I want to take your steps and make your moves because it says be fruitful, multiply, reproduce yourself, replenish the earth, fill the earth with your type. Let somebody take your steps, let somebody make your moves. You shall not waste your life. You shall not waste your life. If you are saying amen, say aloud amen. amen. I said you shall not waste your life. If you are saying amen, say it louder, amen. amen. I, have, I, I have had my children, biological children, say to me, Sir, Daddy, show me how to plan my time. Just give me step by step on the things to just, just how to handle my time, how to combine this and this. Show it to me. Because they are observing you. They are observing your time use. They are observing how... One said to me, say, you do so much in 24 hours. You do so much in one week. Show me how to get, to get things done as fast as that. Eh? As 
see if you have more time in the, not to talk now that is your own child asking you not to talk of strangers do you understand what I'm saying there are people nobody wants to ask them anything but that will never be your portion from today live to such a point where somebody wants to take your steps where somebody wants to understand you understand you understand and understand what you do and how you do them why you do them what you do how you do why you do them because if you don't know why it is done the results may be temporary somebody say amen now that is restoration please take your seat there is another type of restoration that was the one i mentioned last night where god is restoring something in the generation where the light that was on the scene his name was john the baptist now we look at that let's look at that finally right now matthew chapter 4 verse 12 to verse 17 now when jesus had heard that john was cast into prison he departed into galilee and leaving nazareth he came and dwelt in capernaum which is upon the sea coast in the borders of zebulon and naphtali that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by isaiah the prophet saying the land of zebulon and the land of Nephthalim, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people we sat in darkness because the light they had had been removed. To them, and to them we sat in the region and shadow of death. Light has sprung up. That is this new light that just came. After the John the Baptist burning and shining light is now in prison. Now go forward. From that time, from the time that John was put in prison and Jesus stepped in. He began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So one of us here pointed out to me yesterday that this message that Jesus is preaching now, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. It's not, he didn't originate with him. That message was what John was preaching before they removed him. And by the time Jesus stepped in, he said, this message cannot be lost. Now, Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 and 2 was where we saw John's message. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. And what was his message? Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When the messenger was no longer around, Jesus determined that the messenger may be in prison, but the message must not be in prison. He started the same message. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew chapter 3 verse 2 and Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. What is the difference? Everybody read it. Everybody read it. Four seventeen. same what did i say yesterday when the light in front of you gets dim step in and fill up the vacuum that is restoration if you are light you must never allow vacuum generational vacuum This when we go what was around. If uh, uh, um, uh, or a robber was around, John Gillick was around. Uh, if Lake Bishop it was around, you are around. What are you doing? That is an indictment on our on ourselves that we are not qualified to take over the button. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Today, we have seen 10 effects 
assignments and responsibilities of light. The only thing I will ask you is go and step in as light. And I give you four keys. How do I function as light? How do I connect and exist as light? How do I? Number one, by receiving the light of his presence. Receiving the light of his presence. You hang around with God until the light that he is becomes reflective through your life. Psalm 36 verse 9 he said for with thee is the fountain of life inside your light we shall see light we shall manifest light second Corinthians chapter 3 and in verse 18 but we all with open face beholding us in a glass the glory of the Lord we are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by his spirit somebody say amen how many of you know that Moses hung around with God until physical light began to radiate from the face of Moses the Bible says the face of Moses shone and the people could not look into his face because he hung around God. When you hang around you, God hangs on your life. He just his presence hangs on your life. And that and you come out with the light of his presence. Many of us we spend so much time in the presence of people and so little time in the presence of God. So when people encounter us. They encounter a lot of humanity. Instead of divinity. What people encounter from your life. Is a function and a product. Of where you spend the greatest percentage of your time. You spend so much time with humanity, people will encounter humanity. You spend so much time with divinity, people will encounter divinity. It's a matter of choice. Am I communicating at all? Many, many of us are, we are addicted to human beings. And nobody wants to be my friend. You're just addicted to people. There's nothing wrong. But if we can transfer that addiction to God, you will move out and light will move with you. Number two, by receiving the light from his word. This is light from his presence now in the place of prayer, in the place of communion. Now we are dealing with the light from his word. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without anything, without him was anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth. So the word is light. Psalm 119 verse 105 Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Verse 130 The entrance of thy words giveth light and it giveth understanding to the simple. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8 God sent a word into Jacob and it has lighted upon Israel. You bask in the word. Listening to this kind of messages. Meditating. Taking action. 
until light explodes in you and you step out as light. How many of you remember Stephen? When Stephen began to ransack the Bible in Acts of the Apostles chapter 7. He began to ransack the Bible from Genesis. He went through the history of Israel. By the time Stephen finished, everybody who saw his face saw it shining. Was that Acts chapter 7, verse 51 or 55? Look, look at look for it for me. And, and his face shone as if an angel sat on his face. It was Stephen. I think it's the last verse of Acts chapter 7. Kindly look at it. And let's see. As if an angel sat on his face. Now, all that beheld Stephen saw his face. Oh, chapter 8, verse 1. Look at it very quickly for me and place it on the screen. All that beheld Stephen saw his face shone. Alright, 6, 15. And all that sat in the council looking steadfastly on him. They saw his face as it has been. The face of an angel. As Stephen was exploding with scripture receiving the light of his word turns you into a light number four number three by releasing the light of his deposit in our lives everyone who carries god carries light and the deposits of god are deposits of light in luke chapter 9 verse 29 to 30 that was what Jesus released. His face was glistering because his content came out. Giving out and pushing out what God put in you causes you to function as light. His graces, his giftings, his potentials, the things pushing them out makes you function as light. And finally, for today by positioning ourselves in the vicinity of light carriers by positioning ourselves in the vicinity of light carriers you know light is in degrees we have light and we have light scandal light and there is fluorescent light and there is sunlight I'm sure all of us science students we know that the moon has no light of its own the moon only positions at an angle to the sun the sun releases light upon the moon and the moon reflects the light that it received from the sun Everybody will look at the moon and say the moon is shining. Oh well, the moon is shining in the light of the sun. The sun generates the heat. The moon reflects the light without heat. If you can position yourself in the vicinity of bigger light, you relieve yourself of unnecessary stress and energy. There are things God servant Bishop Yedekbo went through to become what he is that I don't need to go through Amen. by being positioned. He said to, to us, he said, you have the right to be bigger than me because everything I know, I am telling you. What I know to do, I am telling you. But you haven't told me your own. I am telling you <laughs> So what I am telling you that has helped me is now being added to what you know originally in yourself. So you are qualified to explode. And that you can put somebody under pressure. See, if you don't exceed where I am, you, haven't, you, have, you have not started. Ah, where you are, And not that he has stopped. And he's still moving. I heard it from his mouth the first time. He called it the wisdom of the moon. That 
is the wisdom to identify light that is bigger than yours. And to position yourself in the vicinity of light that is bigger than yours. And to reflect that light and release it on your generation. Nobody will know where the light came from. But you are reflecting it. That is what happens. It's a covenant alignment. That is what happens to true ministry, sonship and followership. You are positioned, covenantly positioned and covenantly aligned. And it flows. Somebody say amen. When we started church, we started church, 54 people um, at the inauguration and then when the sympathizers left, we were like uh, 30 something. There are churches in Dunamis that a pastor may start today with 500 people, 1,000 on day one. They didn't need to start like we started. Am I communicating? Just be wise. He that walketh with the wise does not need to beg to be wise. He that moves with light shall be lighted and become light himself. But the companion of fools shall be destroyed. A pastor who was talking to me yesterday, uh, uh, communicating with me yesterday, and I told you about how he drew my attention to that scripture. He said he's weeping for our generation. Because those follow, the young fathers are getting old. And those younger people who should honor fathers and collect the mantles they carry are busy attacking them and insulting them. So there's a huge vacuum. Huge. Do you understand? I am not afraid and ashamed to be mentored and tutored and discipled. I'm not ashamed to learn, to be instructed, to be guided. I don't care who it is that God will use to take me to where I'm going. All I know is I want to get there. I made up my mind many years ago. I said, God, if it is my child that I gave birth to, that you will use to take me to my destiny, I am humble enough. You don't know agreements that people enter. If it is my baby from my, my own womb, and you say, this, is, this child, this daughter, this son, should take you to your destiny, I will submit. I'm the one who gave birth to, to the child. Though. But God says, that is the child I want to use. To take you to where I want you to go. Agree and get there. Or refuse and die small in pride. Die small. Die insignificant. Die relevant with a year, year pride. That is profitable for nothing. Stand up on your feet. I know of people who disvalue the role of bigger lights ahead of them, fathers as well. Almost 20 years ago. They are, whatever they are doing is like ant, ant hill. You are looking for them in the radar, you can't find them. People who were voices before, who could preach up a storm. Preach until you carry your chair on your head. Nowhere to be found. Uh, they're just deceiving us. They say, uh, what kind of what wisdom is that? Uh, they say, it's not of God. Uh, everybody has his own anointing. Useless. Even Jesus, as big as he was, submitted to the authority of John the Baptist. John said, am I to baptize you? He said, let it be so. You are the one people know. I am just coming. Let it be so for now. And he created John because he's, he's God. Let it be so for now. So fight to be so for now. It becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. What shall it profit a man if he gain all the pride and lose his crown? Yeah. 
You get all the pride and they are now respecting you. I've seen people who boasted. Nobody ever laid hands on them. Nobody ever uh, touched their head. They are, so, they are so big that nobody ever has ever. I heard that from two or three people before in my life. One of them is no more. One is still alive like he's not alive. Hallelujah. You will go places. Where God has in store for you, you will reach there. After the American conference, my children said, Daddy, can we pray for you? I said, yes. I knelt down. They laid hands on me. They laid hands, touched the back, touched the head. Everybody, including uh, my dam here, Dr. Mrs. Anitra, you don't know the meaning of my damn, my damn self. <laughs> All of them, I was in their midst, knelt down, saying amen at the top of her voice. One of them was coordinating the prayer and leading even specific prayer points. I perceive that we should pray in this direction. I perceive that we should. <laughs> I didn't suggest. They suggested it. Daddy, can we pray for you, please? Yes, please. <laughs> what does it, what, what do you gain? What do, do, do we gain? You know, you know, when, when Jesus said, the, anybody that is without sin should stone that woman. It was the elders that left first. Because that one has been sinning for long. <laughs> so, I believe that God values the voice of children. <laughs> That's why he says, so far little children to come to me for this is the kingdom of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Anybody is going as light this morning? Lift up your hands and begin to speak to God. Begin to honor God. Begin to adore God. Begin to worship Him. Worship Him. Honor Him. Adore Him. Magnify Him. Honor him, adore him, worship him. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. In the name of Jesus, lift up your hands everywhere you are and say, Father, help me, Lord, to function as light to my generation. Help me, 
Lord to function as light to my generation. Help me, Lord, to function as light in my generation. Help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Light. As and say father help me to receive the light of your presence give me the discipline the discipline of communion with you and the discipline of your war in the name of Jesus father give me the discipline of communion with you and the discipline of study of your word I receive Lord in the name of Jesus open your mouth and speak to God the discipline Thank <laughs> you. 
Jesus precious name to place your hand on yourself and ask the Lord at this moment help me Lord to release your deposit in my life to release the light that you have put in me to hold nothing back to release the content of my life say after me say father I ask for the grace to release the content of my life. The deposits you have put in me. I ask for the grace to release out in the name of Jesus. Your deposit in my life, grace to release them. I receive now. Go ahead, open your mouth and speak to me. Of Jesus. Finally lift your hands and say, Father, Father I, connect I connect with the light, with the light of, your presence, of your presence and your word, and your word on, this ground. on this ground. I connect. I, connect. I, position I position myself to connect, to connect. With, the with the light of your presence, of your presence. And, the and the light of your word, of your word from this ground. I connect, I connect now. Open your mouth and pray. <laughs> precious name lift up your hands up and just get ready for a deposit of his help and his mercy lift your hands up
lift your hands and say, Father, lay your hands on me today. Lay the hands on a sword into the hand of someone for victory. Receive it. I see God opening spiritual ears. Ears are opening. Eyes are open. I see fresh power like a horse. Life, your ministry being irrigated. Land was so dry. I see somebody jumping across a barrier they put for you before. say you shouldn't cross cross it now 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 let us say there's a man by the name that starts with an r like a richard from a river right area it's a very terrible limitation that is stopping you from crossing to the next side in ministry and in your assignment. The Lord is setting you free right now. Wherever you are, Father, let the power of God isolate that man and set him free from the powers of witchcraft, powers of the waters. Years of limitation, years of embargo. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. You are going as light and you shall fulfill your destiny. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Take your seat one minute and we shall be closing shortly. Earlier than yesterday. If the person that I mentioned, that, that's your name and that's your situation and that's where you came from. You can step forward here and let us identify and pray for you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. There is someone who came in here 
this morning with an, a condition of the right hand side of the chest whatever affliction the devil has put there on that right hand side of the chest heavy like a stone with pain and weight it has returned back to hell confirm the freedom of your chest and step forward there's someone with the name that starts with an R like a root with a breast affliction the Lord delivers you from that affliction right now everyone who had a healing or an encounter a deliverance in the course of this ministration you will stand on my left hand side here you, you had an encounter a deliverance something happened to you apart from the case I just mentioned you had it, an encounter a deliverance a healing no no if it is a chest condition it's your, go there all right you got a deliverance it's not part of the case I mentioned you had a deliverance a healing a freedom something in the course of the service step forward here All consuming fire. All consuming fire.